Hello, everybody, and welcome to week two predictions. Last week, I went 12 and four, getting screwed over by Cincy, Tennessee, and also believing that Carolina and the Giants were going to be competent this season. That was dumb of me, but here we are in for week two. We begin with a Thursday night matchup between the Buffalo Bills and my Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins are currently favored by two and a half in this one. Both teams enter it at one and oh after 14 point comeback victories in week one. And yeah, even within their comeback victories, one team definitely did look better than the other just based off of how they came back. Miami was a primarily defensive comeback up until pretty much the fourth quarter as the offense took roughly three quarters to fully get going. Meanwhile, Buffalo, the offense was starting to get clicking late in the second, and then they kind of just exploded from there in the second half alongside the defense. It's going to be humid still in South Florida, even with it, it being a night game, so it's going to be a little hot. Miami is wearing their aqua throwbacks, which might give them a little bit of an edge because if you look good, you feel good, you feel good, you play good. Shout out Deion Sanders. So yeah, M Buffalo clearly has the matchup advantage over the past 15 or so matchups, but how am I going to be a Dolphins fan and not have faith in my team to pull it out? So give me the Dolphins to win Thursday Night Football and go to 2-0 on the year. The next game is the Las Vegas Raiders traveling to Baltimore as 9.5 point underdogs. The Raiders coming into this game after a rough loss to the Chargers, who primarily ran it down their throats. The Ravens are entering this game after a very tight loss to the Chiefs, which of which they lost because Isaiah likely couldn't keep his toe in bounds. Yeah, okay, Baltimore is 9.5 point favorites. Vegas struggled against the run last week. Baltimore is all about the run, whether it's Lamar Jackson or Derrick Henry. They're going to run the ball, and if you can't stop it, they're going to be a tough team to beat. And that's exactly what this matchup is shaping up to be. For as much as I like the Raiders front seven, and primarily Christian Wilkins and Max Crosby, there's, it's not going to be enough. They couldn't stop J.K. Dobbins last week. How, the candle in Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry is a really tough ask. So yeah, give me Baltimore to win their first game of the season. Next up is the New Orleans Saints traveling to Dallas to play the Cowboys. A game of which the Cowboys are six and a half point favorites currently, and both teams enter at one and zero. Oh. The the Cowboys came out coming off of a really dominant victory over the Cleveland Browns, of which both sides of the ball were dominant as hell. The Cowboys had six sacks on Deshaun Watson, first turnovers left and right, played a really dominant game. The Saints coming off of a really dominant game for both sides of the ball against the Carolina Panthers. And that's the difference here. Plus, this is being played in Jerry World and not down at the Superdome in New Orleans. Last year, the Cowboys were the number one ranked team at home. And I could totally see that continuing into this season. And this is a very good first game to continue that trend. I have the Cowboys winning. And yeah, Jerry World is going to be rocking on Sunday because for as good as the Saints played Carolina, Dallas is a different beast. The Chargers make the cross-country trip as they head to Charlotte to play the Carolina Panthers. The Chargers come in at 6.5 point favorites as well as 1-0 after a really dominant performance on the ground from J.K. Dobbins. He played incredible and really showcased that he is a legit running back in this league. And the reason why that was kind of a question for me is because during his time in Baltimore, he dealt with injuries as well as having to split up carries between him, Gus Edwards, and Lamar, and Lamar Jackson. Now that he's in LA, well, yes, he still has Gus Edwards behind him. He is now a true primary running back in a sense that when the team wants to run the ball, it's going to be through him. And he took full advantage of it, played fantastic against a Raiders team who was hyped up to have a really good front seven. The Panthers are coming off of a really brutal loss to the Saints, of which that made them 0 and 1. And that game just was never really close, especially with Bryce Young's first pass being intercepted. It kind of set the tone for that game. And in this game, I have the Chargers winning as well. I mean, I, I had faith in Carolina last week, and they instantly tossed it away. So, yeah, give me Harbaugh and the Chargers. The Indianapolis Colts are three and a half point favorites as they travel to Lambeau Field to play the Green Bay Packers. Both teams entered this week at 0-1. The Colts, a tough home loss to the Texans last week. They, in large part due to their lack of a run defense, Joe Mixon ran all over them. 
159 yards, one touchdown, all on 30 carries. They could not stop the run to save the game, and that is what ended up costing them the game. Their offense played well enough to win it. Again, it's just when you don't have a run defense, it is really hard to make key stops late in the game. The Packers are coming off of a tough loss to Philadelphia in Brazil, and as of the recording of this, we don't know the status of Jordan Love just yet. The intention, according to Malafleur, is for Malik Willis to be the starter if Jordan Love can't go. And for this prediction, I'm going to be working under that assumption. With that being said, I have the Colts winning this one. Jordan Love is a big reason why that Packers offense can be so electric because he's a really good quarterback. Without him, I just don't trust Malik Willis to make the same plays Jordan Love would make. Meanwhile, the Colts are still a really healthy team and they still have Anthony Richardson playing, in, playing really well. I mean, that was a great touchdown pass he had to Alec Pierce last week and he did a good job on the ground. So yeah, give me the Colts to win this one. San Francisco has a short week as they travel to Minnesota to play the Vikings. The 49ers are 6-point favorites in this one, with both teams entering 1-0. The 49ers are coming off of a really dominant performance on Monday Night Football against the New York Jets, a game of which they dominated time of possession. Jordan Mason had an incredible game on the ground. I mean, just ran it incredibly, incredibly well. So even with them missing Christian McCaffrey, it kind of looked like nothing necessarily changed with the 49ers. And that is very good because there are some talks that Christian McCaffrey might not be good to go for this game. And in large part due to the turf in Minnesota. The Vikings are coming off of a really good win against the New York Giants. Sam Darnold played better than he has ever had in his career. And Aaron Jones was able to get the ground game going. The defense also played well for Minnesota with Andrew Van Ginkle having a pick six. But all of that was against the Giants. This game is against the 49ers, the defending NFC champions. And even with Christian McCaffrey potentially not able to go, uh, Jordan Mason proved to me against the Jets that he is up for the task. Give me the 49ers to win this one. And should be another dominant performance for them. Next up, the Seattle Seahawks as three-point favorites travel to play the New England Patriots. Both teams enter at 1-0. Seattle, a great performance against the Broncos despite giving up two safeties. The defense played well against Bo Nix, turning him into Bo Picks. And the offense was able to perform really well with Geno Smith even getting the action going on the ground. Kenneth Walker had a good day. The Metcalf, Lockett, Jackson Smith, and Jigba, they all had really good days. But New England is coming off of an incredible upset victory over the Cincinnati Bengals. They are riding high with momentum, and now they're playing at home. And yeah, even with all that going for New England, I still have Seattle winning. Listen, for as good as New England's game was against the Bengals, the Bengals are a historically known team for starting off slow. And New England's offense didn't necessarily look good. Seattle's offense is at least going to be able to move the ball more effectively against the Patriots defense, putting more pressure on New England's offense. So yeah, give me Seattle to win this one. Well, Detroit kicked off the season with a rematch of the NFC wildcard round from last year. And now the week two opponent is a rematch of the NFC divisional round from last year. With the Tampa Bay Buccaneers traveling to play the Detroit Lions. The Lions are seven point favorites, at least as of the recording of this video. And with both teams entering 1-0, and oh, that feels like a lot to me. Tampa had a great, great, great performance against Washington in week one. Baker Mayfield was looking like a dark horse for the MVP this year in that game. And their defense was able to contain Washington's passing game really well. Meanwhile, Detroit is coming off of an overtime victory over the Rams, of which David Montgomery ran really well in, and Amaran St. Brown and Sam Laporta were neutralized. I still have the Lions winning this game, don't get me wrong. But 7-point favorites feels like a lot. Guess we'll find out on Sunday. The New York Giants travel to play the Washington Commanders this week, with Washington being 2.5-point favorites. But I have no clue how this game could play out. Both teams enter at 0-1. The Giants looked absolutely abysmal against Minnesota last week. I mean, the offense was doing nothing the entire game. Daniel Jones looked bad. And that's being generous, saying he only looked bad. And from while the defense did have a league leading, or at least a top five in the league for pressure percentage, they only resorted in one sack out of it. So the defense couldn't really get a lot going. At least they couldn't get home and get the true 
pressures and sacks. Washington at least put up a decent fight against Tampa. Jaden Daniels looked pretty solid in his debut. Passing the game has a little room to work on, but so do a lot of people after week one. But on the ground, he ran the ball well, and Washington's defense, again, put up some kind of a fight. So yeah, I'm going to go with Washington to win this game, but definitely am not too confident in saying that. From one New York team to the other, as the Jets travel to the Music City to play the Tennessee Titans. The Jets are four-point favorites in this game, with both teams entering it at 0-1. You see, the Jets looked okay against San Francisco. Listen, they played decently well. They have a few, they had a few good drives to build off of, but there was just a lot of inconsistencies there. And a lot of it is because this was the first true game for Aaron Rodgers with the Jets. The O-line played decent enough, and I feel like if they keep playing at this level, it will be serviceable. The defense definitely has some improvements to do, but the Jets defense is one you can kind of trust on late in the season. And Garrett Wilson had a good day. Brees Hall in the run game was kind of stonewalled, but it's the 49ers defense. They're going to do that to people. Meanwhile, Tennessee completely threw the game away, like literally with that shovel pass from Will Levis. They, their defense, though, played incredible, but it was against Chicago with a rookie quarterback, so a little bit easier of a matchup than a four-time MVP. So, yeah, give me the New York Jets to win this one, and... I feel like this could be close, but the spread of four points also does make a lot of sense. The Cleveland Browns are traveling to North Florida as they play the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jaguars are three and a half point favorites, with both teams entering at 0-1, but they are vastly different looking 0-1s. The Browns got manhandled by the Dallas Cowboys. And I mean, they got six sacks given up. The offense was able to do absolutely nothing on the entire day. Pretty sure the stat was like late into the second half, it was 50% of Brown's plays was for no gain or loss of yards, which is crazy. Deshaun Watson looked disastrous, and that did not help the defense one bit as they struggled against the Cowboys offense. Jacksonville, for the first half of that game, and really the first three quarters of that game, they were in the driver's seat. They had everything going for them, but they let off the gas pedal against a Ferrari. So... A blown lead for Jacksonville, a complete decimation of the Browns. Yeah, I have Jacksonville winning this one in their home opener. An NFC West divisional showdown takes place in the desert as the Los Angeles Rams travel to play the Arizona Cardinals. The Cardinals are one and a half point favorites currently, and I feel like that's in good part because of Puka Nakua's injury. Both teams enter at 0-1, with both teams coming off of really close losses to quality teams. The Rams case, it was an overtime loss to the Lions, and the Cardinals case, it was a blown lead to the Buffalo Bills. I still have the Rams winning this game. The Rams, even without Puka Nakua for the majority of that game against the Lions, looked really good on offense, and when they orchestrated their comeback, it was without Puka Nakua, and in large part thanks to Tyler Johnson. Arizona, yeah, that first half was really good. But eventually, they kind of just threw the game away themselves. Kyle Murray stopped making great plays. The defense stopped making stops. It just wasn't fully clicking in that second half for Arizona. So, I'm going to go with the Rams for this one. Well, after basically sleeping through week one, the Cincinnati Bengals have the privilege of traveling into Kansas City to play the Chiefs. The Chiefs are favored by six points. Bengals coming off of that really tough loss to the Patriots. And tough, not in the sense of that, oh, it was a tough battle. Tough in the sense that it was tough to watch for Bengals fans. They just did not look good. Nothing was clicking. Yes, T. Higgins didn't play and Jamar Chase was dealing with food poisoning. But yeah, it's just, it didn't look good for the Bengals. And now they're expected to go into Kansas City against the defending Super Bowl champions, a team that played the Ravens really well. And the defense of the Chiefs was able to contain Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson to an extent. Like, I don't... I Give me Kansas City. I have Kansas City winning this game. If Cincy somehow pulls off the upset, hats off to you. Good on you. But I just don't see it. Give me Kansas City. The Pittsburgh Steelers are traveling into the Mile High City as they play the Denver Broncos this week. The Steelers are three-point favorites, and both and the Steelers at least enter at 1-0. And, oh. and that is a really... 
really weird 1-0 they have. The defense played incredible against the Falcons, and TJ Watts should have had a minimum of three sacks in that game, but one was called back due to a defensive holding. The other was called back because the refs called him offsides when he wasn't. And that's just how good TJ Watt is. He timed the snap count perfectly that the refs thought he was offsides. The offense still looked really rough, doing enough to consistently get the team into field goal range for Chris Boswell. But yeah, Justin Fields just didn't play the greatest of games, and he's expected to get the start once again. Meanwhile, Denver coming off of a tough loss to Seattle, and which Bo Nix threw two picks, and they had two safeties. This game, I feel like, is going to come down to a defensive and special teams game, so... It only makes a logical sense to pick the team who just won a defensive special team style game. So yeah, give me the Pittsburgh Steelers. Sunday night football. Is this really the matchup we're going with? Caleb Williams and the Chicago Bears are traveling to play the Houston Texans for their home opener. The Texans are six and a half point favorites. Both teams enter at one and oh, but they are vastly different one and o's. Start off with the Texans real quick. They had a really tight win against the Colts in a game that was dominant in the ground game and a really solid passing game for CJ Shroud. Defense had a little bit of issues throughout the game, but for the most part, they stood up and stepped up when they needed to the most. Meanwhile, Chicago, that was, a, that was an offense they threw out there against Tennessee, that's for sure. You're not going to win every game thanks to your defense and your special teams. You're just not, especially not against a team like Houston's caliber. Yeah, I mean, this is a very tough first primetime game for Caleb Williams. I think he's going to struggle again against another good defense. But this time, he isn't, he's not going to have his defense to save him. Give me the Houston Texans in this one. And finally, Monday Night Football. The Atlanta Falcons travel to play the Philadelphia Eagles, a game of which the Eagles are six and a half point favorites. And much like my opinion on Sunday Night Football, is this really the matchup they selected? And I get why they did. Listen, Atlanta just was looking really well, rough against Pittsburgh. And as in large part because the Steelers have one of the best defenses in the league. They're going against Philly this week, who maybe not the best defense in the league. Still have a really good defense in the league. And, heard, and it's clear that the Falcons offense has not gelled perfectly together yet and still have a learning curve to go through. That would mean that was a bad performance against the Steelers. The Eagles are coming off of a really, really good win against the Packers in Brazil. And it took, it took a quarter, but eventually the offense looked incredible. Saquon Barkley had a great game. Jalen Hurts had a good game. Both Devonta Smith and A.J. Brown had good games. This is being played in Lincoln Financial Field. It's going to be a tough one for Kirk Cousins and the Falcons. Give me the Philadelphia Eagles to win and cap off week two. All right, so those are my predictions for week two of the NFL season. If you enjoyed, subscribe. It would be greatly appreciated. And leave a like. And while you're at it, comment down below. Who do you have pulling off the upsets? Who do you have being dominant and winning big? And who do you have Thursday night? Thank you all for tuning in. I'll see you guys next time. Have yourselves a damn good one. Peace.